Hello guys, recently I received an email with person asking how can I improve this code that you can see on the screen. It's a Laravel job or artisan command to go through the invoices that are unpaid and overdue and then you need to disable the services for the users that are not paying for their invoices. And in this video, I will perform a code review of this code with various optimizations on readability, performance, general errors and stuff like that. And for that, I will also show you PHP unit test, Laravel test. So by the end of this video, we will have PHP artisan test successfully launched with expected results. And I asked my colleague Nerius to recreate that project for me. I don't have the full code from the user from that email, but I tried to simulate the invoice model, the products, the relationships and stuff like that. Let's get into it. First, I will explain how I understood what this code does, and you can pause this video and read it yourself, but I will just jump line by line. We're querying the invoices that are unpaid and overdue, and with due date earlier than today, basically overdue. Then we query the users that have those invoices with overdue status, and then we go for each of those users. We update that the user status becomes zero, it's probably one beforehand. And then we compile the array of disabled services, services to disable. And services are compiled like this. For each of the overdue invoices, for each invoice items, if that item is a product, we disable the quantity of the services with that product ID. So probably every service can be ordered multiple times and some of the invoices may be unpaid. So from five services, it's possible to have three left because two are unpaid and three are okay. So that's the logic. And then we disable all those user services. This is eloquent model again to status zero. So that's the general logic. So imagine you get this code for review from your teammate, for example, or maybe you're hired as an external consultant and this code is not written by yourself, and where do you start? Of course, there are various approaches, but to ensure that this code actually works, I would start with automated tests, because for any changes I make, I need to make sure, did it work or not? And to avoid testing that manually every time, it's better to write the testing scenario so that automated robot would do the testing for us. So I've asked my colleague Nerius to write those tests. Let's see them first. And I will launch the test in a terminal to make sure that this code is working in the first place. Maybe it's not. So there's a feature test just called artisan command test. No big deal here with a few scenarios to test. Test that active invoice remains active. So the first test, we have user, active user. We have invoice, which is unpaid, but not overdue yet. And we can launch this artisan, assert that the command is successful. And then we assert that the database has user with still status one and service with still status one. So that's the first test, the first scenario. Then another test only inactive invoice changes having different users. So two users, one is unpaid and another user has overdue. And after the launch of service deactivate artisan command, we test that the first user is still okay with active services and the second user is not status zero. And then the first scenario is a mixed situation for the same user. So same user has two invoices for different product. And then we test that the user is inactive. One of the services is active, but another one has status zero. So those are the scenarios that we came up with. And to launch that test, we run PHP artisan test. Before that, we prepare PHP unit XML with SQLite database in the memory. And then I removed test unit test with only feature left. And what happens if we run PHP artisan test? So we run PHP artisan test. And the first goal of our video, by the way, is just to make the code work. Then we'll optimize it and make it more pretty. But first, let's ensure it works. Our first run of PHP artisan test gives us error, undefined variable user. And here's where I noticed the first error of the artisan command, and it is actually underlined by my PHP storm as well, user variable, probably undefined. And here I see for each of the users as user, this statement is outside of that for each. So I'm not sure if it's some kind of typo on behalf of the email author, or was it such a big error in real code, but actually we need to disable user services 
inside of this loop. So for user, we compile disable services array and only here we perform the deactivation itself. So that's the first error we can correct. Let's close the sidebar for now and let's rerun the test again. PHP Artisan test. Now it is successful. So there was only one big functional error, at least in those scenarios that I came up with for the feature test. And now we can work on performance optimization and maybe some readability stuff. And as a side note, I have full course full of such examples of refactoring. I called it 10 plus Laravel refactoring examples with exactly that philosophy, how to make some code case work better with writing tests, checking before, after and improve. So you can check that out at mylaraveldaily.teachable.com or subscribe to the yearly membership to get all of my 30 courses. Now let's get back to the video. First, small things I notice in the code. Personally, for readability, I prefer lines to be not that long to the right, but instead we have where, where, and update. Now it's much more readable without the eyes running to the left and right, it's all in one place. And if you want it to be even better aligned where with where, often I use query and then put the where on another line. Also, the operator equals is by default, so it's not necessarily needed to be passed. And the same thing is here, query where equals is not necessary. So these are small optimizations. Also, my PHP storm even underlines product is product. So this is the same. Then what I see is disable services should be renamed as a variable, probably at least do disable services like this. So then you see it's two words and then we rename it here or maybe it could be renamed to like services to disable or services IDs to disable, something like that. And then we also need to change that here at the bottom. And here, let's also make it on one line. Where, where in, take, update. This is actually an interesting solution. We update only the amount of services here. So we don't update all the records but we take only the amount by quantity and then update only those. And also let's do query here like this. Looks much better, right? And then what I noticed is the author is using invoice item as a product and then checks if it's a product. The naming of the variable doesn't seem correct to me. So this is not a product, this is invoice item. And then it's checking whether it's a product or not. So I would rename that as item. And even actually, have you noticed PHP storm even suggests that because it's items as item. So then I go item is product and item here. And here I'm not sure why it's eloquent, but they are using array syntax. I prefer object. So is product, it would still work as array, but I prefer object syntax like this. Okay, now our code is much more readable. And this is, by the way, my concept of code optimization and code writing in general. The first goal is to make it work. The second goal is to make it maintainable, which means readable, reusable, and basically someone else can work with that code easily. And then the third step is optimization for performance, scalability, and better architecture decisions. So make it work, make it pretty, make it scale in short. So now let's make it scale. Let's see what we can optimize from the performance point of view. I see a couple of things that we can improve. First, we are querying overdue invoices here. So checking for their existence. And then we actually use those overdue invoices with their items here. So this sounds like a duplication. And that overdue invoices, as I understood it, it has many relationship with just where condition in the user model. So we can reuse the same overdue invoices instead of doing where has here, just do has overdue invoices. Let's relaunch our test. And that's actually where the tests pay off. Did we break something or not? So let's relaunch PHP Artisan test. Still green, everything still passes. Okay, so we optimized this one. Then what I see, we're getting all the users Although actually what we need is just the user ID. So that's another typical thing that developers do. We actually need to select only the ID field to save the memory. We don't need all the users. Again, relaunch our test. Did it break or not? 
still green. Good. And actually a bit faster. Not sure if that's directly related. Let's relaunch it again. 93. Probably it's a small difference. Doesn't matter that much. And then if we take a look at the amount of queries, we're launching one query per user for the update. But for services, for example, we compile disable services and we launch the update in wherein. Why can't we do the same thing for the users? So update the services and then update all the users after for each. So for example, user wherein ID disable users. We will compile it in a minute. Update status zero like this. And actually it's not even wherein. I think find would work. User find disable users. And then we'll compile those disable users from the very beginning, empty array, and then here, disable users, user ID, and then we don't launch that query for user update. Instead, we launch it after the loop. Let's try it out. PHP artisan test, still green, failed. Collection update does not exist, of course. It's not defined after all, it's where in, where in ID disabled users. Because find returns the collection and where in returns the query, the query builder. Let's relaunch that again, PHP artisan test, now it works. Interestingly, it's now longer, one second, let's relaunch that again, 122. I think it was a coincidence, again, 096, so it's not that significant. And actually, in general, in those tests, we wouldn't see the difference in performance because in our tests, we launch only the case for one user or one invoice or something like that. So those tests actually test if the artisan command worked correctly, but whether it worked faster, we would need to set up a different scenario, setting up like 10,000 users and testing before after. But I think that's pretty much it, what I can come up with in terms of what can I improve here. Maybe you have other suggestions, shoot in the comments below. And you can also send me your suggestions, what I can review in terms of code like this. Keep in mind, I don't do it often and I do it only for code snippets or cases that is not taking that much time from me because it's quite time consuming. And also I pick the code that would be relevant and useful to broader audience. If you have something like that, and if you want me to review your code in public, email me, pavelos at laravaldaily.com. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.